How's it going everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Brian Halligan and today we are going to talk about different rifle types and help you figure out which rifle is best for you. But if you haven't already hit the subscribe button because I'm hoping to come out with more product review videos like this, some coaching videos, biathlon commentary, hit the subscribe button down below so you are kept up to date on all the action going on on this channel. All right, let's dive right into it. So there are three rifle types that I'm going to be talking about today. And these are the three most common rifles that you see in biathlon. Now, when you watch a biathlon race, you might think, oh my gosh, what the heck is going on? Their rifles look crazy. I've never seen anything like it. Even people who are extremely experienced in firearms will look at a biathlon rifle and it might take them a moment to really understand what is going on. So today I'm going to go a little bit into what an actual biathlon rifle is, the different components of it. But the majority of this video is going to be talking about the three different rifle types that we use in biathlon and just talk about the differences between them and hopefully if you're looking to join biathlon or join a club, you can use this video to help you decide which uh, rifle is best for you. So first, let's talk a little bit about the different components of the biathlon rifle and what makes a biathlon rifle different than maybe just a standard rifle that you might go out and shoot with your uncle. So first, the major components of a rifle. As you can see here, I have my rifle and yeah, it looks a little different than something you might have seen even on the World Cup, but that's really just because I painted it. But if you can look at the rifle as a whole and compare it to what you might see on the World Cup, you'll see that it's not very different. Up here, everything that you see in metal up here is the actual rifle part. This is the barrel up front with the front sight in blue. And as we move back, you have your action back here, followed by your rear sight. This right here is the bolt, and this is where the magazine goes in and the bullet goes into the chamber. So really what we're going to be talking about in this video is, are the differences between different rifles. Uh, what I'm holding here is the Onshoots Fortner, and I'll go a little bit more in, in depth with this in a moment, but the important thing here is to make sure you know that we're talking about the rifles and not necessarily the stock, which is painted here in black, or something like the harness, which helps you wear it on your back like a backpack, or even the sling here which helps uh, with the cuff and stabilization in front. So it's really important to make sure that you know that we're talking about the rifles here. And again, that's everything that's metal, the silver part and this action back here. I'll do another video that goes over different stocks, uh, different components, different everything that you can uh, put on your rifle to help upgrade your rifle. But for now, we're just gonna talk about different rifles. All right, so like I mentioned, this is the Onshoots Fortner. This is the top of the line rifle that you will see on the World Cup, at the Olympics, and even at some of the highest junior championships. This is the standard for biathletes around the world. Uh, Anschutz is a German brand and they make this rifle specifically for biathlon. Some of the unique components to this rifle that is uh, unique and special for biathlon, first is the sliding bolt. So normally on rifles you'll see the up, back, forward, down motion on the bolt. In this rifle it's a straight pull, push forward with your thumb action uh, to re-bolt. This is specific to biathlon because in biathlon when the clock is always ticking, uh, it's important to be really fast while rebolting. Sometimes the up, back, forward, down can get jammed or it's just generally just quite a bit slower. When you think about it, when you're shooting, you take your shot, it's just a really quick flick of the wrist, and not even, just a flick of the hand, and you're rebolted and ready to go. This bolt style right here is why some of the most elite athletes in the world can shoot all their targets, or shoot clean as we say in biathlon. They can hit all their targets in close to 19, 18 seconds sometimes. You know, trying to do that with a normal bolt action rifle can be kind of tough. And so on shoots really tries to give athletes uh, a leg up. A few other things that are that are really specific uh, to this rifle that gives it uh, its edge. The barrel is made so that way it can withstand cold temperatures. Think about this: is the standard rifle that you're going down to the to the gun shop or Cabela's to buy is that rifle made for the cold? Not necessarily. Most people don't say that they're going out to you know shoot in the cold too much. Maybe if you're a hunter and you're hunting in the winter, but this rifle is specifically made for shooting in the cold. These rifles have been tested in cold chambers at incredibly cold temperatures and have shot incredibly good groups. And when it comes to precision shooting, group size is what matters. And we'll talk about that uh, in a little bit. Now my rifle might be a little bit different than one that you buy off the shelf. Again, I painted this rifle because 
quite frankly, I like the color blue. Um, but you know, if you were to buy a rifle, an on-shoots rifle, brand new, it might look something like this. And this whole setup right here that you see in this picture, and that's again just the rifle in the standard stock, would probably cost you around thirty-five hundred dollars. Now, including the something like the harness, uh, extra magazines, uh, upgraded sights, a blinder. Um, even if you wanted to upgrade the stock, you're talking getting close to $5,000 for our brand new rifle. The good news about these rifles is that if you take care of them, they will last. You can take care of these rifles and it will work just as well, if not better, than the day you bought it. So reselling these rifles, I tell everyone who's looking to buy non shoots, yeah, it's a big upfront expense, but reselling these rifles uh, can be uh, pretty easy sometimes. And I know people who have spent uh, $4,500 on a brand new on shoots and resold it for about $3,500. So uh, while yes, it's a big upfront cost, you can resell it uh, for a pretty decent price. That being said, some people ask, well, can I buy a used one? Will it help me cut down on cost? Yeah, it will, but again, even used ones are going for $3,500 these days. So um, in my opinion, I think it's best to just go right off uh, you know, the shelf, buy a brand new one. It's, it'll cost you a little bit of extra money, but you know that it's, it, it's not gonna have any rust or damage or anything in it. Sometimes with used rifles, you can get a bad prior owner who maybe didn't clean it as much and it can start to rust. And rust is the kryptonite for really high level rifles like these. So whatever rifle you get, make sure you're cleaning it and you're keeping the rest off of it. All right, the next rifle I wanna talk about is the Ishmash Biathlon Rifle. Ishmash is a Russian brand and this is their answer to the need for a fast biathlon rifle. As you can see, it's a little bit different. Again, don't let the stock fool you. We're focusing solely on this action up here. The action is a little bit different. As you saw in the last rifle, there was a back and forth motion. With this rifle, you have a, uh, a brake bolt, something that comes out to the side when you open the bolt. It still allows for that quick uh, bolting action that you want in biathlon. However, it's not as smooth. It's a little bit catchy. Um, and in my opinion, uh, I think it's a really good starter rifle for someone who's maybe not looking to spend as much on shoots, but they're looking for something uh, that will get them into the sport and something that's a little bit cooler than just the straight, like, you know, bolt action rifle that you find down at your local gun shop. So, so one criticism that I have with this rifle that I've seen, and this is kind of ironic because you think built by the Russians, Siberia, it, you think of Russia, you just think of cold. I've seen from personal experience that these rifles do not work as well in the cold. And what do I mean by that? If it's 15 degrees Fahrenheit, is it gonna open up and you know, you're know you not gonna be able to hit the target? No, I'm talking about extreme temperatures, something closer to like zero degrees Fahrenheit or even under, that's when it really starts becoming an issue. Now reminder, a biathlon race can't happen if it's negative four degrees Fahrenheit, so how often are you actually gonna be shooting in extreme, in extreme cold like that? Probably not very often. However, I have seen with my own two eyes that in the cold, these barrels, and it's really the barrel that is the issue, uh, it will open up your group size pretty significantly. Again, we'll talk about group size at the end of the video. A couple other things to think about with this rifle is the sights. Uh, you twist them the opposite direction for sight corrections. Uh, sight corrections is how, let's say you shoot a really good group, but you're not exactly centered on the target. You can adjust the sights with these knobs here. It'll move you into the center of the target. The one thing about this rifle that's different from the on-shoots in regards to the sights though is that the sights are backwards. So on the on-shoots, you'll click clockwise to move the, the group down to the center of the target. On this rifle, you actually wanna go counterclockwise and that'll move the, the sights down. So sometimes if you have, if you're using this rifle and your coach gives you a correction, you just wanna make sure that they know that uh, you're using an, an Ishmash and not an on-shoots. Um, common mistake, because it'll actually move you the wrong direction and it won't help anyone. Really, that's the only beef that I have with these rifles. Uh, I think they're a good entry level rifle. Um, <laughs> you know, they, they, they do well in most situations. Again, extreme cold. When are you ever even training or racing extreme cold? Um, but everything else, it works really well. I mean, it's got the good, uh, unique biathlon actions. You do see a few athletes on the World Cup from Eastern European nations using this rifle. So it's not like this rifle doesn't work. Um, the big thing with this rifle is that you can't buy a new one in the United States right now. That being said, used with the full setup, usually a used rifle will come with the full setup, the harness and the sling and all the magazines and 
and usually like a case that you'll need. Full setup for these is going for approximately $2,500 to $3,000. So again, a little bit more affordable than the uh, on shoots. However, um, it's just a little bit lower quality as well. So uh, you know, you can really feel the difference when you can handle both rifles and you can feel the smoothness of the on shoots and see the precision where this can be a little catchy sometimes, but you know, for the most part, it'll work. It's a good entry level rifle, especially if you're only gonna be shooting once every other week, maybe you're only racing a few times a year. All right, so for the longest time, those were the only two options that were out there if you wanted to buy on. It was either you know, spend a lot of money and get the on shoots and look really cool, or you know, get the Ishmash and you know, it'll work. It's a biathlon rifle. Everything's great. However, you know, even on a low end Ishmash, twenty five hundred dollars. That's still a lot of money that people are spending, and you know, it's it's a huge barrier to entry for people who are still deciding, do I really want to get into this sport? In the last couple of years, we've actually seen the Savage Mark II uh, been adapted for biathlon, uh, specifically uh, by companies like Lost Nation R&D at Craftsbury Vermont, who have begun making biathlon-specific components so you can adapt your Savage Mark II into a biathlon rifle. Now, what am I talking about with these components? What makes it different? Well, first, most importantly, it's the sights. The sights on a biathlon rifle uh, are, are pretty standard, where it's a peephole in the back. In the front, you have an aperture that uh, circles the target. For the longest time, they didn't, you didn't really have great sights on the Savage rifles. And what was happening was the sights were so uh, poor quality that they would just get banged and bumped and broken, and, and all of a sudden, you can't even hit the target. So. In the last couple of years, uh, Lost Nation has actually developed these two um, adapters. One is a rail for the Gorman site in the back, which Gorman's a great biathlon site. I would recommend it even on the on shoots. Uh, it's a good, good quality site and not as expensive as an on shoot site either. And you know, you adapt that with your front site. It's an adapter that comes with the snow guard, which is important for uh, inclement weather, and it also has uh, the Williams front sight uh, so it does have the, the normal biathlon aperture that you would see while looking through an on shoots. The second thing that Lost Nation has been doing to help uh, you know try to fight that barrier to entry when it comes to rifles is also the stock. Uh, you saw in the uh, Ishmash that I just had a stock that looked very similar to this. It's the Lost Nation RMD stock and uh, they make they make stocks for on shoots, Ishmash, Savage and I think another brand too that they're trying to use as a entry level biathlon rifle but uh, with the advent of these stocks, it's it's easy to buy a rifle, a Savage rifle, and put it on this stock and have a real biathlon feel. Obviously with this stock, you get the harness, you get the sling, you have the magazine carrier, which most uh, rifles that you buy down at the store don't have a slot for your magazines. And don't forget, when you do a biathlon, you have to ski with your magazines. You can't just leave them at the range. So. Um, the one thing I do like about these is they're very adjustable, but we'll talk more about stocks in a future video. Going back to the rifle now, um, one thing that you see is different on the trigger with this rifle as opposed to the other two is it has Savage's uh, two-stage AccuTrigger. So it gives you that two-stage feel that you get from the on shoots, but it is a little different. There's the first pull on the silver part, which picks up to the black part, which applies that second little bit of pressure and then ultimately makes the shot go off. Um, my biggest beef with the Savage rifles is that they are pretty uh, low quality uh, when it comes to uh, holding up in inclement weather. And remember, biathlon is an outdoor sport. Uh, you know, we're gonna be out here and competing in the snow. Sometimes you have training in the rain. And I've seen firsthand athletes who try to save a little bit of money and go with this entry level option that just have absolutely terrible times when it's snowing and when it's raining and just seeing um, magazines uh, expel uh, rounds everywhere to the point where you have to hand load magazines. Um, I do think that if you're, you know, if you're a fair weather biathlete and you're maybe thinking of coming out every once in a while but you just want a cool looking rifle to show your friends sometimes, this is a great option. However, if you're serious about competing and serious about training, I would definitely recommend uh, upgrading um, especially if you're going to be doing it long term. Um, the Savage Rifle, it, this is pretty unique. The, the rifle itself costs about $200 and you can actually buy this down at your local gun shop. Uh, the Savage Mark II is a very popular brand in the US. I think it's even an American brand. Um, very popular in the US. You can get it for $200. You can spend another, you know, about 100 bucks for the Lost Nation sites. 
um, to adapt it to Biathlon, and then another $500 for the Lost Nation stock, a couple hundred extra dollars for sling and cuff and harness and everything else that you need. And this setup right here will probably cost you about $1,200, including a case and everything. So, you know, when you're talking about the Ishmashes that are specifically built for Biathlon, low end going used for $2,500, and this is this full setup right here doesn't look too much different for about $1,000 less. Um, it's that's a pretty good deal if you're you know just trying to get into biathlon and you're not sure how long you're going to be doing it. Um, I think this is an awesome option uh, for trying to you know overcome that barrier to entry, the expensive cost of getting into the sport. However, again, in my opinion, if you're serious about biathlon and you're serious about coming to practice and training and racing, you definitely got to get something uh, a little bit better in quality than this. Because the one thing I always say when it comes to uh, biathlon rifles and cost is that you're paying for quality. So yeah, on a uh, on shoot, it's a brand new one. You might be getting close to 5K. You're getting really high quality rifle that the best in the world use. Ishmash going down a little bit. People, some people on the World Cup use it. Don't forget though that those people on the World Cup also have access to Ishmash techs who travel all over the place. And if anything goes wrong with their rifle, they will you know be there to fix it. And the athlete doesn't have to do anything about it. You've, I've never seen this on the World Cup. I've never even seen this at a high-level national competition. So, um, again, good entry rifle, but would definitely recommend something uh, better if you're going to uh, be doing this long term. All right, so the biggest thing that you should consider when buying a rifle really is performance. Is the Onshoots Fortner really worth $5,000, or can you get away with just a $1,000 uh, Savage Mark II? I'm going to put these rifles on blocks and we're going to try to take away the human element from shooting and we're going to see how well they can shoot in pretty easy, nice afternoon summer conditions. All right, so we're out here on the biathlon range and here's what they're going to do today. We're going to first zero all the rifles to make sure that they are centered on the target and then after that we are going to take 10 shots on a single piece of paper and hopefully we can see the difference in uh, you know group size and, and basically what a group is is it's how big your shots spread when you take shots at the target so for example a really good group would be you know something that looks like just one hole in the paper a really good group would have all the shots touching each other a pretty poor group is a group that is really open. You can see all the individual shots and they're pretty far away from each other. Now, obviously, there's a lot of human error that goes into getting good groups. Most of the time there's a bad group, it's because the athlete is, uh, you know, maybe not focusing super well or, you know, just not shooting correctly. So, I like to think I'm a pretty good shooter, but, uh, you know, to try to take the human element out of it, we're also gonna use a stand, so that way I can just completely relax, completely rest on the target really focus on side alignment and trigger squeeze and not really, you know, take my body movements into account. So once we get the rifle zeroed, we're going to go ahead and take uh, 10 shots on each target and uh, yeah, we'll report back to see, you know, what the spread is. All right, and the ammo that I'm using is just a box of CCI. Uh, it's got the holiday edition packaging, but it's just CCI because it's cheap and it, it's nice and consistent. All right, so here are the results of the shooting test. This is 10 shots with the on-shoots rifle. As you can see, it's not really zeroed, it's not really centered, but we have 10 shots that are pretty darn close to each other. If you were to move this more centered, all of these would be solid hits touching the nine ring. Now we have the Ishmash Biathlon rifle, and at first glance, this looks like really good shooting, which it is. You have six shots that are touching each other, which is really good, that's what you want to see but I want to direct your attention to the four flyers out here and these are the ones that are going to come back to bite you when it starts getting a little bit chilly or it starts getting a little bit windy. 
So as you can see, the Ishmash Biathlon Rifle can shoot really well, but it does have a few flyers, and uh, that's what you really want to try to avoid. Finally, we have the Savage Mark II. Obviously, this group is not centered. However, if you were to adjust your sights and move this group in the center, you'd still have at least four, maybe even five misses out of ten shots. So 50% of the shots not being in the prone ring, even on a block with pretty good conditions, uh, that's not what you want in a rifle. You need all 10 shots to be in the center or you're going to be doing a lot of penalty loops. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like button and it will get the video out to more people who like biathlon. It will get in front of people who might be interested in this topic. So hit the like button, hit the subscribe button too if you haven't subscribed to the channel. I'm hoping to come out with more content like this. But until next time, we'll see ya.